Imagine turning this into this. And yes, it was an actual construction plan. A structure that would drain an entire sea, expose 660,000 square kilometers of new land that's bigger than France, and literally redraw the world map. This isn't science fiction. In 1928, a German architect named Hermann Sergel proposed exactly this. And here's the insane part. Nazi Germany seriously considered building it. Because apparently, starting a world war wasn't enough of a bad idea. They needed a backup, terrible decision. The plan was to dam the Mediterranean Sea at Gibraltar, lower the water level by 200 meters, and create a new supercontinent called Atlantropa. Think of it as humanity's most audacious middle finger to geography itself. But wait, it gets crazier. This wasn't some crackpot idea scribbled on a napkin. Sergal spent 30 years promoting it, published thousands of pages of technical drawings, and convinced actual governments to fund feasibility studies. The project would have cost over $500 billion in today's money, roughly the GDP of Sweden, and taken 150 years to complete. So why did multiple European governments, including the Third Reich, take this seriously? And more importantly, what would have happened if they'd actually built it? Hermann Sergel wasn't your typical dreamer. He was an architect who'd already built real projects when he looked at the Mediterranean and thought, yeah, I could delete that. In 1928, Europe was broken. World War I had left millions dead, economies shattered, and tensions already brewing for round two. Sergal's solution? Give Europeans something so massive to build together that they'd forget about killing each other. His logic was weirdly compelling in the same way that just one more episode at 3 a.m. is compelling. Europe was running out of land and resources, while Africa had plenty of both. The Mediterranean was just in the way, so why not drain it? It's like looking at your neighbor's swimming pool and thinking, that could be a really nice parking lot. Now, speaking of massive projects that actually could help people, this video is sponsored by BetterHelp. You know, researching these historical mega projects got me thinking about how we all have our own ambitious plans that don't always work out. Maybe you started the year with huge goals, or you're in a different place than you expected to be by now. That's totally normal. Life is basically a series of adjusted expectations, minus the environmental disasters, hopefully. For me, making these videos is partly about understanding why people take on impossible challenges. Sometimes it's vision, sometimes it's desperation, sometimes you just need someone to talk through your ideas with. That's where therapy can help. BetterHelp makes it simple. Fill out a questionnaire, get matched with a credentialed therapist, and if it's not the right fit, switch anytime at no extra cost. Click the link in the description or visit betterhelp.com slash curious reason for 10% off your first month. Now back to Sergal's actual plan, because here's what made politicians genuinely consider this madness. Sergal promised to solve every problem Europe had with one project. Energy crisis? The dams would generate 110,000 megawatts, enough to power half of Europe forever, for free. Overpopulation? Here's 660,000 square kilometers of new land, enough to feed 87 million people. Worried about another war? Every country would be so financially chained to this project for 150 years that starting a war would be economic suicide. Plus, he designed it with a kill switch. An international body would control the power grid and could literally turn off any country's electricity if they got aggressive. It's like giving the UN the ability to put entire nations in timeout. Sergal wasn't just selling a dam, he was selling world peace through mutually assured construction. 
The core plan involved three mega dams. The main one at Gibraltar would be 35 kilometers long. Imagine driving for 20 minutes just to cross a dam. The second dam would seal the Dardanelles, cutting off the Black Sea. The third would span from Sicily to Tunisia, creating two separate Mediterranean basins that could be drained at different rates. But Sergal wasn't just thinking about dams. He envisioned entire cities on the newly exposed seabed connected by a massive railway network. Venice would become an inland city, 150 kilometers from the nearest coast. The Adriatic Sea would be completely gone. Just farmland. It was Sim City on steroids, except the map editor was god mode for an entire continent. The Gibraltar Dam alone would require 200 million cubic meters of concrete. That's enough to build 80 Empire State buildings. The dam would need to withstand the pressure of the entire Atlantic Ocean trying to refill the Mediterranean. That's the same as holding back a tsunami forever. Here's where it gets properly insane. The Mediterranean evaporates one meter of water per year naturally, but rivers refill it, block those rivers, and you'd need to wait 3,000 years for it to dry naturally. So they plan to actively pump out 370 75,000 cubic meters of water per second. That's draining two Amazon rivers worth of water every single day for a century. But evaporation removes pure water, leaving salt behind. The remaining Mediterranean would become a hypersaline death pool, basically the Dead Sea's evil big brother. Nothing could live in it. No fish, no plants, just a toxic brine that would poison any farmland nearby. The construction logistics were pure nightmare fuel. They'd need 250,000 workers laboring for 10 years just for the Gibraltar Dam. That's a city's worth of people living on a construction site in the middle of the strait. Every day they'd pour enough concrete to fill an Olympic swimming pool. For comparison, the Burj Khalifa took 12,000 workers six years to complete. And that's just a tall building, not a continental cork. But wait, there's an even bigger problem nobody initially considered. Isostatic rebound. Remove trillions of tons of water from the Mediterranean basin, and the seafloor would literally rise up like a compressed mattress when you get out of bed. We're talking earthquakes that would make the San Andreas Fault look stable. Every coastal city from Barcelona to Cairo would be rubble before the project even finished. But if the engineering was this insane, why did the Nazis love it? Here's where history takes a dark turn. When Hitler rose to power, Sergal thought, finally, someone crazy enough to build this. And disturbingly, the Nazis loved it. Not for Sergal's peace and unity reasons, but because it fit their twisted worldview perfectly. The Nazis saw Adlantropa as the ultimate Lebensraum living space. All that new land could be colonized by Germans. They weren't searching for some legendary treasure at the end of the Grand Line. They were literally going to delete the sea itself and claim everything underneath. The all blue in reverse. Africa would be even more accessible for exploitation. Plus, controlling the Gibraltar Dam meant controlling every Mediterranean nation's coastline. Don't pay your dues to the Reich? Enjoy watching your ports become useless inland cities. But here's the ironic twist. The project was too international for the Nazis. Even Hitler was like, guys, maybe we should calm down a bit. When the Nazis are the voice of reason in your plan, you need to seriously reevaluate your life choices. It required cooperation with countries they plan to conquer. You can't build a dam between Spain and Morocco while also planning to invade both. Even megalomaniac dictators have limits. Apparently, they had the power, the plan, and the psychopathy. So what stopped them? Modern climate models show Atlantropa would have caused an extinction event. Removing the Mediterranean would turn southern Europe into the Sahara Desert. No Mediterranean means no moderating influence on temperature. Summers would hit 50 degrees Celsius in Rome. Winters would bring Siberian cold to Madrid. The French Riviera? More like the French wasteland, but 
hey, at least they'd solve rising sea levels by creating a different, much worse problem. It's like curing your headache by cutting off your head, technically effective, practically stupid. The ecological collapse would cascade globally. The Mediterranean produces massive amounts of water vapor that becomes rainfall across Europe, Asia, and Africa. Delete it and you delete the rain. The Amazon rainforest, 8,000 kilometers away, would start dying because Mediterranean evaporation influences Atlantic weather patterns that bring rain to South America. It's the butterfly effect, except the butterfly is the size of a continent. Ocean currents would go haywire. The Mediterranean's heavy, salty water sinks and drives deep ocean circulation. Remove it and you potentially shut down the Gulf Stream. Congratulations, you've just given Britain the climate of Alaska. London would look like that scene from the day after tomorrow, except it's not fiction and there's no happy ending. Even if physics didn't hate this project, economics would murder it. Sergal estimated 100 billion Reichsmarks in 1930s money. Adjusted for inflation and reality, we're talking $500 billion minimum, probably trillions. That's assuming everything goes perfectly, which in mega projects means you should multiply by three. But here's the killer. Every Mediterranean country's economy would collapse overnight. Fishing industry, dead. Shipping, dead. Tourism, who wants to vacation next to a toxic salt lake? Venice without water is just a weird city with unnecessary bridges. The Greek islands become Greek mountains. Billions in coastal infrastructure becomes worthless. The projected benefits were fantasy. Sergal promised unlimited hydroelectric power, but the turbines would clog with salt within years. The new farmland would be salt-poisoned wasteland for centuries. It's like burning your house down for the insurance money, except the insurance company is physics and it doesn't pay out. Personally, I don't blame Zergel. In fact, you can understand and feel him because he witnessed two world wars which were indescribably cruel and bloody and he got traumatized. This was the result of that trauma. The scariest part? Alan Trapa had serious support into the 1950s. The United Nations discussed it. Major engineering firms drew up plans. The Munich Institute of Technology created detailed models. This wasn't flat earth conspiracy stuff. Real scientists thought it was possible. Why? Because humans are terrible at understanding compound consequences. We see big problem. We want big solution. Post-war Europe was desperate. Atlantropa promised energy independence, new land, and united purpose. It's the same psychology that makes people buy lottery tickets. The dream blinds you to probability. Even today, variants keep popping up. In 1997, engineers proposed a partial dam for hydroelectric power. In 2020, a Dutch firm proposed a 475 kilometer dam between France and England, not to drain anything, but to protect against rising sea levels. The price tag, 250 to $500 billion. Adelin Tropa represents humanity's greatest engineering near miss. If they'd built it, you wouldn't be watching this because civilization would have collapsed by 1980. It's a monument to the idea that just because we can doesn't mean we should. But here's my question for you. Knowing all this, if you had infinite resources and zero consequences, would you still want to see it built just to witness the sheer audacity of it? Or are there some things humanity should never attempt, no matter how impressive they'd be? This video took weeks of research into declassified documents and engineering studies most people never see. If you found it valuable, destroy that like button harder than Atlantropa would have destroyed Europe. What other impossible mega projects should I cover next? Please comment down below, subscribe and support this channel on Patreon or here on YouTube.